Right guys, we're going for it. My first semi-professional YouTube video. So, the boys, thank you for the, to the boys in uh, Vale RC because they gave me the confidence to do this. And check this out. We're going pro. Bought a little streaming center thingy. So we'll try that in a minute. But the one thing we're gonna do is knock the heater off. Get it a little bit quieter here. So the length of this video, I'm going to try and keep it short because I'm probably going to freeze. <laughs> so what I'm all about is modifying, let's see if this stand works now. Ooh. That's not professional, is it? Right. <clears throat> so what I'm all about is taking, I generally take, let's move that. So I'll take a model with flaws and modify them. So a little bit about me, I, well, I'll show you this in a minute. I've had this about 20 years. I've had this 32 years, showing my age now. Um, <clears throat> so been out of RC for about 10 years. First lockdown hit, bought out of my skull, decided to build, rebuild the T-Max and rebuild the childhood car. Lost the transmitter. So did a bit of research and thought I'd modify it. So what I've done to this, I've actually nicked the receiver out of it, which is why it's in bits, but it's great. So, kids model, obviously, <clears throat> and I thought, right, let's put some professional electronics in it. So that's what I've done. And this is the kind of thing I do, and this is the kind of thing you'll be seeing on this channel. So, there's a, a bit of a rubbish board in this, um, but we've gone brushless. So, put a brushless motor in there, it's ridiculously fast. Um, 2S, proper servo. And then the battery tray, some of you will know I had QDs as kids. I modified the battery tray. Um, and let's see if we can show you now. Can't show you that. But uh, yeah, just bits and bobs and thinking. And I thought, I reckon I can get vape batteries in there. So I altered all the terminals so I could put two vape batteries in, which are 10 440s. Um, <coughs> That gives me 2S across there. So there's four lots of 2S to give me decent power. And this thing flies. Um, then this side, modified here, to give me 2S into there. So it all goes together, it all looks standard. And it's a little flying machine. So yeah, like I said, this was just a lockdown project. And then it went on from there and it's gone a bit nuts. You can see the shelf behind me. It's full of models now. Let's, uh, so I'll be showing you these in a bit more detail, showing you how I do it. And put this back and show you the Supermax. This is where the Veil, the Veil boys are going, oh, not the Supermax again. But yes, it's going to be the Supermax again. <laughs> so with this one, uh, standard 2.5, I bought it when they just about came out, so I'm guessing 18, 18 years ago, something like that. This has been to hell and back 50 times. It's been rebuilt more times than I can remember. Um, so it's been sat on a shelf, it's been sat on a shelf for years. Um, it was still on 27 meg, <clears throat> and then lockdown came. Um, part of the reason I wanted to do this channel is because over the years with this, I mean, I know T-Max is inside out. And I did, of course, you want it to go faster and faster. Looking for my keys there, and they're in my pocket. Also trying to keep this lighting quite quick. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Never gonna be any professional editing from me. That's not me. So, love or hate, this is how it's gonna be. Um, so yeah, it was bog standard 2.5, um, I was new to RC, relatively new to RC back then, and I was doing the old modifier as you break, which is okay, but um, of course, anyone who's got a T-Max knows you break a bulkhead, it's major surgery, and it's ball like. So the first thing you do is put alley uh, bulkheads in, and then that just transfers it somewhere else, and you just break something else, and something else, and something else. So I got to the point, there was a, quite a lot of alley on this, um, and then the motor wouldn't pull it. So the motor's um, overheating all the time, the old 2.5. I 
Not a fan of the 2.5 in this. I think it's too much truck for the for the engine unless it's bog standard. So back in the day, um, the Pico 21 small block came out. Chuck that in it. Awesome, great. Because because it's faster, you smash it up more. So then you go for more alley and more alley and more alley. And in the end, the truck was totally um, aluminium, but it was so heavy. With the Pico 21 in, it was no better than a standard one anyway. Yeah, it owed me, like, back then, the alley stuff, the, the, you know, it wasn't... You didn't get the GPM stuff from China like it was. Um, and it ended up owing me, like, two grand, the track. And it, it, it was no better than standard. So, of course, learned a bit now. And, again, this is where part of the reason for the channel is because <laughs> I wanted to learn from my mistakes and not waste your money and have an awesome truck. So... Lockdown came, I broke I broke the truck as it was, full alley, sold all the bits off, thought start again. So we went pretty much back to standard with the, uh, the Pico 21, which was old. Took it out um, with my bestie Stephen Hermans, um, and he's, he'll be on the channel, right? <laughs> he is the send it king. Um, he's known as Demo, I've known him, sadly, I've known him like 29 years now which just makes me feel old, but um, yeah. So I call him Demo. He's been known as other names as well, including Tripod. Thought I better not break you into him tonight because he's ugly. He is really ugly, but <laughs> anyway, he's the send it king now. Um, where was I going with that? Don't even know what I was saying with that now. Oh, yeah. So, oh yeah, he had... Um, now he's not very technically minded, the reason I brought him up, he's not very technically minded, but back in the day when we bought the T-Max, he bought a Hyper 7. Now, he's not very good at tuning. I, I've been a mechanic for 20... too long. Too long. Um, <clears throat> so, Demo's not very good at tuning. However, the Hyper 21, it always just worked, and he beat the crap out of it, and it always worked. So... <clears throat> We, we bust them out, we got them out the loft, we fired them up, got them going. Had trouble with mixing crystals and all this, that's how old it was. And we had a bit of fun. I started to have a bit of grief with this and um, I thought, all right, I'm just going to go for it. So I built this. It was took me a couple of attempts to get it right. <clears throat> I thought, I want to put a Hyper 21 in my truck. But I couldn't have it on a starter box and couldn't do this and couldn't do that. So I thought, right, again, it's locked down. We've got loads of time on our hands. Um, and it was so I thought like let's go for it so what I did if you look in between the <clears throat> easy start and the engine you'll see an aluminium plate so I made that and I th it was a little bit of drama I ended up cutting up and grinding the Hyper 21 pull start to get that to fit in the Traxxas thing it was a little bit of a nightmare but eventually I managed to get <clears throat> the Traxxas easy start turning over the Hyper 21 on the bench, right? But I had to chuck 12 volts down the motor. Now this is the other thing which goes wrong with hobbies all the time. People people don't realize um, the Traxxas starter motor is it's just an industrial motor that costs about three quid. But yet when you burn one out, first thing people do is um, go to a big hobby company, order them, and they're like 27 quid I think they are now for a Traxxas Easy Start. And it's just a two quid motor, two quid 12 volt motor. So anyway, I stuck 12 volt into it and it was okay. It, um, it, it did do it, but you had to get, it was a brand new engine, brand new Hyper 21, but it, it was struggling. So I thought, right, let's try a brushless motor. So now from the success of putting a brushless into my old childhood car, I knew how powerful they were. So I thought, right, I'll wedge a brushless motor in there. Did it. It fires up. It's immense. It's absolutely immense. Um, I will show you in another video, but I've left my transmitter in the car and I can't be bothered to go and get it now. Um, <clears throat> so I did that. Um, then, because none of it fits with a big block, so I thought, right, okay, no problem. We'll make a chassis. So I made... Got the 3.3 chassis. Now, the problem is... I did actually buy a 3.3 chassis. Problem is, the extension on the 3.3 chassis is on the front. Now I needed it to be longer on the back. So I ended up making one. So I copied the 2.5 up to about here 
and then I left a gap and then I just worked it out and managed to get the big block on remote electric start in here. Um, what did I do wrong a couple of times? Now, admittedly, I probably should have done it out of better aluminium because um, it's had a couple of modifications to get it right. But I can absolutely beat this truck to death and it will not break. It absolutely... <laughs> I broke it on Sunday, but <laughs> it, was, um, it just doesn't break. The, the one problem I had, I had a major crash um, and stripped a spur. And what happened, the motor actually bent the chassis a little bit. So I've put a strengthening plate there. Ideally, I'd like to do this again out of titanium, but um, this was a bit of an R&D project over lockdown. And when I trash it, I, when I eventually trash it, I might make another chassis. But I folded the chassis edges up um, because they tended to flex and break the fuel tank. I haven't broke the fuel tank on this yet. The only thing I've done to it, other than... Um, when was it? I've done a spur or two, um, and then Sunday, bearing in mind, I've, I've probably put a gallon of fuel through this, and a gallon of fuel hard. I beat the crap out of this thing, which is why I built it. Um, I wanted it to be indestructible, and I want to send it, and so, um, I have. Um, it finally stripped the gearbox gear on Sunday. Now, I did use a second-hand gearbox. I have no idea the origins of the gearbox. I've I don't think I've ever taken it apart. I literally just bolted it in the truck and carried on since. So yeah, it's probably had probably had a gallon through it, um, a hard gallon as well, and yeah, it's thirteen quid's worth of gears, big deal. But um, yeah, so I'll be going through bits and bobs and how I've done it. Of course, a couple of boys have seen this now and they all wanted it done, so I did it to those. I'll bust out another one now. Tech. Always fancied one of these. Of course, lockdown, you're bored, you're on eBay playing. And uh, did the same again. I'll start wrapping this video up in a minute because uh, long videos bore me and that's not my intention really. But yeah, we'll go into a bit more detail again. But I've done the same thing there. It's pretty much a standard 4Tech. I've just changed the electronics and made it remote electric start. So we'll go into that again, but uh, some of the more custom ones. I'll just whip you through a couple just quickly and show you what's going to be coming. Uh, so after the success of the Fortec, I thought I'd do a Revo. Again, I've done it with a big block. And uh, it's remote electric start. I actually took this out properly for the first time on the weekend and it's mind-blowing, I love it. Like I said, I'll go, to, go into detail again, but what we've got here, brushless remote electric start. Uh, you can see there, everyone grinds the arms. I didn't grind the arm. Um, and it's, it's awesome. It's easy to use. So like I say, we'll go into more detail in that. And one more. So I like relatively easy projects. Now, um, a couple of months ago, probably six months ago now, I was out with Demo and we were over a bash site and I, I was carrying, um, before I'd modified the Revo, I was carrying the Revo in one arm, the Supermax in the other arm and I had a rucksack on my back with fuel, the transmitter and all sorts and we had to walk about a mile. By the time we did that, I was knackered, so I thought, right, I'm not doing that again. So I built a custom trailer. I'm not going to spin it around. Some of the Vale boys have seen it. And I bought a project on eBay, which was one and a half twin detonators bolted together. Turned it into a bit of an Arctic. It worked quite good. Um, it was badly built. So one of my custom projects that will be coming, um, yeah, I'll go into it in a lot more detail. However, this is going to be the chassis for it where I've started the chassis. And I will get the gearboxes now and show you quickly what I got in mind. So six wheel drive, uh, pulls like a train. Uh, 
like I said, I have had this running and it was pretty successful, but I thought I could make it way better. So there will be one axle there, one axle there, and I'll move it forward. One axle there, quite a long bed then, and another axle there. 